February 3rd, 2003 The Father Speaks And now I tell my bride, Beloved, do not fear. You will not die even though the rays of my gaze upon you wounded you feeling faint. For I, who am life, am holding you fast now and will not let you go. See, winter is past. The rains are over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The season of bridal ceremonies has come. Did you not know that you are of royal descent and that your king has been waiting for you? Enamoured of my bride, I look at the gift of my hands. I look at myself within you, and what I see delights me. I look once more on that which is now my property, my vineyard, my garden. I look at my own seed, the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. And although I look at the wound my great love inflicted on you that made you ascend into the highest heaven, I rejoice at the flower. The footnote reads, Flower stands for wound in this text. The father continues, I rejoice at the flower, the permanent mark that my love left on you. This wound is the mark of the promised land, of the discovery of the pearl. This is the sign of my exuberant love, the sign of your resurrection, the sign of your empty tomb. What your eyes are now witnessing in front of you is virtue on his throne. Beloved, and fragrant oil of my heart. My inamorous friendship will sweeten and comfort your soul. Wedded at last, come now in my embrace and contemplate my light, my heart, my wealth, my mercy, enriching, enriching and brightening your soul becoming greater than all the kings and their kingdoms. Your sole ambition from now on should be to plead for others in my presence, making entreaties for their sins. Being united with me, you will be filled with the spirit of understanding and will shower forth on this generation words of wisdom. Then reposing still in my embrace at dawn, you will resort with all of your heart to the one who created you. You will give thanks to the one who perfumed you with myrrh. Near me and in my embrace, you will grow upright in purpose and learning. You will ponder in all my hidden mysteries and upon the angelic virtue of dispassion. Then, now and then, I will send you out to the world to display the instructions you have received. Modelled now in my heart, you will obtain a new mind. My will will be known to you, and you would know what is good for I will be your guide. I and you will be partners. So enter into partnership with me to go together to the regions underground, to those who go down to the pit and deliver them so that they in their turn get to know me, their God. See? I will teach my dove to saw the skies, perfuming the nations, and still dripping with balsam and myrrh from my embrace, 
your lips will be singing to your own citizens, regardless of colour or race, the odes of the divine. Your lips, moist with grace, will sing to the tune of integrity and religion, and according to the divine law of love and redemption, while covering the citizens with balsam and myrrh. You will supply them from the reserves of heaven. Creation I have created you to fill your heart with my sweetness and my divine love. I have anointed your heart by breathing in you and made it in such a way that it should be able to contain and maintain the sublime love and sweetness of myself. For my love is better than life itself. I never deprive any heart of that joy of myself, for having me contained in your heart, without any resistance from your part, the spiritual consolations become so embedded in you that your heart will only profit all the more of my sweetness, of my love and of my deity, leading you thus with strings of love into the filial path to rule with me, your king. Ruling with me will put on the beauty of my glory on you, while the angels and the whole celestial court will wrap the cloak of my integrity around you, lifting you like a censer, filled with incense to fragrance the earth. But if I find a tepid heart, whatever love and sweetness it contained at its birth, this heart will never be able to profit of my presence. It would be as a cracked cistern, that continuously seeps its contents out, never holding them. And no matter how much one fills it, it will always run dry and will remain empty. Such a heart is finally deprived of that joy known to my saints for lack of faith and giving preferences on earthly indulgences and luxurious substances other than my spiritual wealth. These hearts, after having been filled with my presence, gradually lose me. Just like the liquid that would seep out of the cracks in the cistern. And Satan, seeing no resistance, envelops them then with his darkness. Therefore, you who have never tasted yet my sweetness, but laid eternally in bitter gall, rise now and come forward, for there is but one glory, one delight, one ineffable moment of joy that can become eternal, one ravishment of the soul, and that is to see me and taste me, your God. Yes, Vasula, your soul swooned the other day when I graciously appeared to you, and while you were contemplating me, the ground seemed to sway under your feet when my glance fell on you. You were mesmerised. My appearance gave you a new mind and a new life, my sweet conversation with you wedded you. My fragrance on you anointed you to join the procession of my angels and saints round my presence and sing with them a hymn of thanksgiving, proclaiming all my wonders and my prodigies, loving my heavenly courts, the place where my glory makes its home. He who once said, Let there be light in you, my friend, the one who fills all things without being contained by their limits, 
invites you to refute all that is evil. Today, your King, your Creator and your Bridegroom is offering you a great banquet. With largesse and prodigality, I have, by royal command, given authority to all my angels to go from north to south and from east to west and gather you all, announcing that the triune God, in an ineffable way, intends to transfigure his creation. These angels are the guardians of my kingdom's threshold. These will be the days in which your soul has to be prepared and arrayed for the bridegroom. I display my riches and splendour of my kingdom and the glory of my majesty that belong to you to enjoy them. I descend on earth, as I said, as a bridegroom in these days of darkness and gloom, of affliction and distress, oppression and great disturbances, where demons are let loose to go in all directions and deceive not only the wretched and impure of heart, but also the elite. O blessed renewal! O blessed transfiguration! Captives today, but free tomorrow. I tell you truly, that you too will join the procession round the altar, together with my angels and saints, if you are open to my will, allowing in this way to be led into the king's royal chamber with the angels and saints in your train. These guardians of my kingdom's threshold then, in one voice will cry out, Gate, raise your arch, rise you glorious door, Let the bride in, the King of glory, the ruler of nations who reigns forever. Her beloved is waiting for his bride. Having then passed the king's threshold, you will find yourself standing in the presence of the King of glory, the fortress of your life the most handsome. Loyalty and nobility are his insignia. Your bridegroom, seated on his royal throne, with a gold sceptre glittering in his hand, dressed in all his robes of glory, covered with gold and sapphires, a formidable sight will raise his face at the sound of your step and a fire with majesty will say Come to me and receive me as I will receive you. I will beautify you in my embrace with greatness and splendour. Intimate knowledge of myself and honour of your God will be arrayed on you, adorning your soul and perfecting it. Now you are to take part in our spiritual marriage, in this divine union, in which you will obtain ineffable blessings that surpass any blessedness. If you will be open to my will, this is what will happen. Generation, I put my love before your eyes, and although my love is beyond human understanding, come, pause for a while, and reflect and know that I am God, but Father as well. 
I do not speak with rigid formulations. This is not the way I make saints and martyrs. My sweet converse to you is virtue and religion. I address my odes with no sword by my side. My divine mysteries are lovable and are revealed to you with oil of gladness. Although I have seen your wretchedness and know that known the miseries of your soul, I have not turned my face from you, but rather with love I remember you. Goodness and kindness are the paths I choose for you, for my paths are love and truth. For the sake of my holy name, I revived your soul, daughter, and pardoned your guilt. I have put by your side virtue and integrity to be your joyful companions. To enjoy me, beloved, and walk in my presence with me in the land of the living, I offered you to acquire wisdom and willingly arrayed your body with my transcendent light. It is written, Happy the man you choose, whom you invite to live in your courts. The footnote reads, Psalm 65 Verse 4 The Father continues Indeed, for the one who is invited is no longer alone. Those who were alone are now in me and blessed. They have renounced the world, their friends and their relatives, detaching themselves from my glory. In brackets it writes, It gives me more glory and I receive more honour when the detachment comes from people who are living out in the world with so much temptation encircling them, but by their own free will will turn their back to all those evils and willingly offer their will to me. The footnote reads, This part in brackets was said to me as one who wishes to confide something to his friend, like if someone says, By the way, the father continues, I secure in my divine light all those who are in me. Come and listen to my odes, All you who fear me. Have you ever heard any time that I have forgotten to show mercy? Or that my anger had overcome my my tenderness? All I do is done in faithfulness and justice. Under the eyes of your enemies... I encircled you in my embrace, Fasula. Shame on your aggressors. Shame on them who fill their heart with wicked fury, envying you because my eyes were upon you, producing light within you. Drawing you in my footsteps, infuriated them. Whispering my amorous odes in your ear, were reasons for them to assail you. But I made you like a gazelle, leaping on the mountains and free. I have made your heart as a lily, free from worry. I conferred my blessings on you, lifting you from the dust, offering you an everlasting place in the golden chamber of my heart. These will have to drink one day from their own bitter cup, filled with venom. 
the Father speaks. So now, let my words console you. Let them be like a balm upon you. Bow your ear now, and receive my song. Royal dignity had set his eyes on you before you were born. The footnote reads, Jeremiah 1 verse 5. The father continues, Dignity had set his eyes on you before you were born to show you and through you my glory and the way to my kingdom, a marvellous road. And since then, I became your starlight through the night of your soul and the sunshine through the day. My all-powerful hand did not lack means in distributing my gifts to you. Yet your people, the footnote reads, some of the orthodox hierarchy, the father continues, yet your people, defied my gifts and measured me. I govern with great lenience to enlighten, to instruct and in great abundance pour anointed oil on the head of those I choose, causing utterances of prophetic oracles, mysteries that are hidden from the learned and the wise. To wish to destroy and martyrise the soul that I love and favoured, and that I filled with mysterious sayings, noble songs and royal odes. I tell you who scheme evil. Your own wickedness will be punishing you. And I will recall these oppressors, their infamous sins, on judgment day. I am the ruler of your spirit and no one would be able to shake you ever. Our sweet conversation with you will continue, surging great fountains within your heart. And together, my beloved one, we will spread my delicate fragrance around the world, perfuming nation after nation. Then one can say, Winter is past, the rains are over and gone. The flowers appear on earth. See? This is the reason why I have you enclosed in my heart in which you can receive consoling caresses from me. But wait and see how much more you will be consoled in heaven in my kingdom, for every aggression done on you. Everything is measured. In the royal chamber of my heart, my nard will continue to yield its perfume on your heart, and the bitter air you had inhaled from your accusers will evaporate quickly, giving you tranquillity and peace of mind. Consoled thus by the aromatic scents, you will never leave my royal heart, ever. More than ever, you will attach yourself to me, to the true God. Tell me now, where will you rest at noon? Vesula answers, I will rest in the golden chamber of your heart. The father asks, Tell me, let me know, my beloved, where will you rest in the evening? Vasula responds, I will rest in the golden chamber of your royal heart. The father asks, And where will you rest for the rest of your life? Vasula answers, I will take my rest in the golden chamber of your royal heart. I will, Lord, Father, bridegroom and lover of mankind,
put my roots in your heart. I will follow the tracks of your royal heart, where one forgets oneself in contemplation of you. Lord, your love is like a liturgy to mankind. Sovereign ruler, in your mercy you deem to shroud me in your radiant light, dissipating not only darkness but vice as well. God Almighty, you who hold the universe in the palm of your hand, I am not only amazed, but totally defeated when you adapt yourself, without any congruity, to me and my like. Instead of casting me away, in your loving kindness, you cover my soul with bridal gifts, distilled from the reserves of heaven. Then, in your exuberant love, you join yourself to me in a spiritual, divine marriage, experiencing the flavour of your kisses that surpass the fragrance of myrrh and frankincense and every aromatic scent. My soul, thus in your embrace, says to everyone, You too can obtain the same graces and undeserved gifts if you decide to spend a life in God, seated as well on his lap, cleaved on his royal heart, clinging on his perfumed vestments, while delighting in his embrace, in profound meditation, and lost in contemplation, in his ineffable beauty, your soul will be sated in his blessedness, transcending any delight, any sweetness, any glory. In his favour, diligently I was permitted to learn the alphabet of the divine. The Father speaks. For this is my sweet doctrine, my dialogue, the doctrine and dialogue that should be instructed to all mankind. I wish to remind you all of my language and re-educate you. Such as these odes the human heart should learn. For the wisdom and the sacred meaning of the truth lie within my royal heart. Signed Alpha and Omega. Vasula writes, This long message took several days to be written.